Hi, I'm Deanne Akers Lons from Canada Abroad, and today we're going to be discussing how you can immigrate to Canada. When looking to immigrate to Canada, we break it up into two different ways. There's those that have a job offer already and those that don't have a job offer. For those people who don't already have a job offer from a Canadian employer, the main programs that you would be looking at would be the Federal Skilled Worker, Federal Skilled Trades, and the Canadian Experience Class. These are also the three programs which utilize the Express Entry System, which is a system that scores applicants based on a variety of factors, including their age, their education, their language skills, and their work experience. They will take other things into consideration, such as if you have a sibling in Canada, or if your spouse is fluent in English and has some education as well. With that system, you get ranked against all of the other applicants in the Express Entry system who are trying to immigrate to Canada. If your score is too low, this is when people would start looking at the provincial nomination options. Now, for those programs that we just listed, this would lead to permanent residency as soon as you arrived in Canada. So you would not be starting on a temporary permit such as a work permit and then bridging to permanent residency. You would be a permanent resident from day one. If you don't meet the requirements as a federal skilled worker, the federal skilled trades or the Canadian experience class, then typically you would need to get a job offer and enter Canada on a work permit. Then once you are there in Canada on a valid work permit, there are certain provincial programs that you can use to bridge to permanent residency. Or if you met the requirements of perhaps a federal skilled worker or a federal skilled trades person, once you've worked in Canada for a year, you get additional points, which you can then use to get your permanent residency. Those who cannot get a job offer, sometimes they will look at the option to study in Canada. Because once you've studied in Canada, if your program was eligible and the school that you attended was eligible, you can get a post-graduation work permit. It's valid for the same duration as your program of study. And once you've completed the program of study and you've got your work experience in Canada, then you can typically bridge to permanent residency. But it's also just important to note that you might work in Canada or go to school in Canada, but it does not guarantee that you'll end up getting permanent residency. In order to get a work permit in Canada, the first thing that you would need to do is to get a job offer from a Canadian employer. Then depending on the situation, in most cases, that employer would have to do what's called a labor market impact assessment. Essentially, this is where they would need to prove that they had advertised that position in Canada and that they could not find a Canadian citizen or permanent resident to fill the spot. And that's why they need to bring in a foreign national. There are some exemptions to this. Most notably, if you work for a company in your home country, which has branches, affiliates or subsidiary in Canada, you could be allowed to do an intercompany transfer. The labor market impact assessment would not be needed at that stage. Now, once you have the labor market impact assessment, or if you're exempt, you then go and apply for your work permit through Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. If you are from certain countries, you might be eligible for what's called a working holiday through the international experience class. There's also other sub programs for people who are currently studying at university and want to work in Canada during their break or you might have recently graduated and are looking for some international work experience. So if you click the link below, you will see the list of all of the countries which are eligible to participate in the international experience class. And most notably, the United Kingdom is eligible for this program. So if you are a passport holder from the United Kingdom, you might be eligible, depending on your age and a few other factors, to get a working holiday. This is an open work permit, which would then allow you to enter Canada without a job offer and gain some valuable Canadian work experience. If you want to study in Canada, the first step is to apply to a designated learning institution and get your acceptance letter. You need to make sure that you have enough money to cover your first year of tuition and your expected living expenses. Now, once you've got that acceptance letter, you need to find out what documents are required for your specific country of nationality, and then you need to submit your full application to the Canadian government. As long as you've satisfied them that you meet all the requirements of a student, they will issue you with your study permit. You can then enter Canada and study there. 
depending on which institution you went to and which program you've done and how long it was, you might be eligible for a post-graduation work permit. This would then allow you to work for any company anywhere in Canada for eight months or longer. The duration is based upon the duration of your program. So if you studied in Canada for two years, you would get a two-year post-graduation work permit. After that, you could then look at your options for permanent residency. Another option for some people is what's called the family class. If you're married to a Canadian citizen or permanent resident of Canada, they may be eligible to sponsor you to Canada. Another option is if you have a child outside of Canada and you're a citizen or a permanent resident, you can sponsor that child to Canada as well. For family, there's unfortunately no option for siblings at this time. The only other available option is for Canadian citizens and permanent residents who want to sponsor their own parents or grandparents. Now there is one stipulation to this program. If you have no other living family members, except for maybe a cousin or a distant relative or your sibling, and they also have no other living relatives, then in some cases you can sponsor that person. But both of you would have to be single, no children, and no other direct relatives of your own for that to apply. So if you have a family connection to Canada, you might be eligible to be sponsored through the family class. If you're interested in immigrating to Canada to open your own business or to purchase an existing business, at the moment, those programs run through the provincial governments. So what this means is depending on where you want to open your business, that province would have specific requirements in terms of what your net worth needs to be and in terms of what you need to invest into purchasing the existing business or into opening a new business. There would also be requirements on the number of Canadians that you would need to hire within your first year or two. So if you are interested in opening a business, you would first need to come up with a business plan and a business idea. And then depending on the location, see if you can meet those specific requirements. Now, some of these provincial programs have now started to rank the entrepreneurs. So what this is, means is if you came up with your business plan, you would submit it to the provincial government for review and you would be assigned a score. They would then invite those entrepreneurs with the highest scores to submit the full application, which would typically first give them a work permit to enter Canada and start implementing that business plan. And if the business plan was implemented, you would then get your permanent residency. There used to be a federal investor program, which is currently closed with no, uh, no opening in sight at the moment. And at the time of filming, today, March 14th, 2020, the Quebec Investor Program is also closed. Canada also has what's called the Self-Employed Program. So this is specifically for people who are athletes, known at the world-class level or international level, or people in the culture and the arts who are self-employed. So artists, painters, certain professions such as that would qualify. With these programs, you would have to show that you have enough self-employed work experience in your field or that it's at the international level. So not everyone who works in the arts or the sports is gonna be eligible for this program. It also uses its own specific point system. So if you think that you might fit into this category, you would just wanna confirm that your occupation qualifies you and that you would have a high enough score to enter an application. This would lead, again, direct to permanent residency, so not a work permit to begin with. You would be eligible to be a new permanent resident as soon as you arrived in Canada. And the self-employed program used to also have an option for farmers, but that has now since closed. If you're the parent or a grandparent of a Canadian citizen or permanent resident who is over the age of 18, they might be eligible to sponsor you for what's called a super visa. A super visa is different from a normal visit visa because it actually allows you to stay in Canada for two years at a time without having to exit the country, where a normal visit visa only allows you to stay for six months at the most. With the super visa, you would have to show that your child or grandchild is earning a certain income that can cover their own family and you in Canada. If they can show that they meet that requirement, they can then sponsor you for the super visa. You as the applicant would have to do a medical exam and submit police clearance to show that you have no criminal record or serious medical issues or anything that's highly contagious. 
you would also have to purchase your own private medical insurance for the first year in Canada and then you would submit the application. It's almost the same process as a normal visit visa except for those additional health and criminal background checks and the health insurance. If you're in Canada, you can also apply to extend it for a third year. And this is a great option for those who want to get sponsored for permanent residency eventually, but maybe your child or grandchild doesn't yet meet the full requirements to do so. This allows you guys to at least be reunited in Canada so you can be with your family and you can wait to be eligible to be sponsored for the full permanent residency.